Morning, it's uh, Sunday morning here in Spain. Well, only just morning, it's about to hit 12 o'clock. But there's been a couple of people bugging me for the last three, four days related to Visibox. If you don't know what Visibox is, it's basically the auto dialer system that many call centers use. Um, there's different variants because they're built on the Asterix system, and then you have like uh, the uh, Go Auto Dial and other bits and pieces. They're all built on Asterix. And I originally did a video a few years back on how to install Visibox. Uh, the problem was I did the first video and then I went overseas. And the problem is I rank really high in Google for it. Um, but I haven't actually done the rest of the video because I started it off explaining what it is, blah, blah, blah. And then in the next one, we will be installing. Um, the problem is I never got around to doing that video. And I thought, well, these guys have contacted me, but they don't know enough to get me through their system to do it for them. What I mean is they have routers which act as firewalls. You know, your, your internet modem you have there, it can sometimes be difficult to get through. If they don't know how to access even that, I can't do it remotely. Um, and I know somebody's going, oh, yeah, but you could do remote, ask, uh, remote desktop. No, you can't because it's not a desktop. It's a clean install. It's an operating system. So I'm going to be putting together... A VisiBox install. If there's enough interest, I will also do things like fail to ban, which is basically it. It will actually turn around and recognise people trying to break into your server via multiple password use, etc. And then it will automatically block block them um, and add their IPs to a list, so that they can't continuously do it. It just gives them like a couple of attempts, and if they can't get it right, it then adds them to this list. Um, I'll teach people how to load le leads. I'll teach people how to do the servicing on um, their dialect. A lot of people don't know how to do it. See, the funny thing is when I found... What I found in the Philippines is a lot of the IT guys didn't actually know how to run a server. What they do is they replicate what somebody else told them who told, was told by somebody else. And you get this long list of people that only know how to replicate. Why is it important to actually understand how things work? When you've got congestion on a phone line, uh, con congestion on your internet, your dialer is still trying to make calls. But the calls aren't going through because the, it's often to do with the volume. If you've got too many calls going through, for example, say you're dialing 50 calls, but 30 are getting caught in answering machines because of the time of day. It's congesting the line because it's not dropping in and dialing another number. There's lots of reasons lines get congested, but if you don't set it up properly, it just burns money because... It, you think it's still making calls and you've got agents sat there that aren't actually getting connected to live calls but the VC box isn't actually cleaning the junk um, for example if you like I said the answer machines you get disconnected numbers you got there's multiple reasons that you could actually have problems with lines calls connecting including somebody deciding to do a download or something in your call center without your knowledge there's all these sort of things you need to protect yourself on the system from um, then you've got things like how do you do your recorded messages how do you transfer all your recorded messages uh, conversations from your server to your desktop so that you can actually monitor cleanse inspect, test, and sometimes send to the client if they want them. All these bits and pieces, you will struggle to find um, how to online. You will find some resources on it, I'll tell you that now, because I found all the resources, and then I spent a lot of time getting it all to work. Um, but this is what I was saying, a lot of the guys I met in the Philippines on the IT side didn't know how to do some of this stuff or they knew about 30% of it because they only replicate what they were shown before. 
An example of that is when you get problems, they will go and say, we need to format the server. When the answer is, no, you don't. What you need to do is actually maintain your server and isolate where the problem is. Because it could be you haven't moved all your recorded messages, uh, recorded conversations onto your desktop, and it's built up a lot over a period of time. Like I said before, we, we were doing 26,000 calls a day. Um, the average agent will speak to about 500 people a day. Um, so you've got 500 conversations for every single agent. And there's a way to even reduce that if you know how to do it. But this is the important thing. If you don't know how to do this stuff, do not rely on an IT guy unless you know they do a good job because there's a lot of duff ones out there and they will turn around and learn how to do it on your time. And the difference on running a dialer well to different running one, well, just running it and hoping for the best is my dialing costs was $250 a week for eight hours dialing a day for 45 people. Another call center, same number of agents, was costing them between five and $750 a week. $550, uh, $750 a week because their dialer was set, wasn't set up the right. Also, they didn't cleanse the leads the same way I do because I, I sit and monitor credit court scores and stuff. So I actually filter the ones that aren't going to be sales or wouldn't actually meet the criteria in the first place. There's no point talking to them um, because even if they agree and want it, they can't have it because they don't meet the basic criteria of the sale. Anyway, there will be Visibox stuff coming up and I'm going to put it on my other channel where the original video is um, purely because that's where everybody's looking. And like I said, I've had people say, Matt, Matt, how do you do this? How do you install this? Or I've installed it, but what do I do now? It's asking me questions. And for me, I haven't done this for two, two and a half years. I've now had to set up a partition on my laptop to install VisiBox onto my laptop as a separate operating system purely to do these videos. Um, but I'm hoping it helps people out. The other side of this being is that if you are good at this stuff, I'll tell you now, installing VisiBox on somebody's server costs between $250 and $500 um, if they do it remotely. Um, doing online servers are about $250 a time. Getting somebody to help you with your server is about $50 an hour. So it is worth learning how to do it. Um, and personally, I never spent any money on IT guys at all. Never needed to because I just spent the time learning how to do it. This is why I said when I first set the call center up, I spent a month learning how to work with Visidial because I sat there and looked at what didn't work, how does it work, what's it doing, what's the commands for this, how do I do this, where a lot of other people go, i got an IT guy to do it. The IT guys aren't burning money. You are. They are getting paid either way. When they're not running your server properly, it doesn't affect them in the slightest. It only affects you. All right. Thanks for watching.